In our last video, we saw an introduction to cellular respiration used. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at cellular respiration, starting with the process of glycolysis, which is the initial, which is the initial uh, set of reactions that occurs in all cellular respiration, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic. Before we do that, we want to take a little bit of a look at ATP and sort of how it works as an energy shuttle. Here's a molecule of ATP. Um, you'll see three distinct parts to this molecule. It has a nitrogenous base, adenine, which gives it its name. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. You'll also see a sugar here, ribose. And you'll see the part that we're really, really interested in, which is the three phosphates. This is where the energy is held in the ATP molecule. You remember that uh, ATP molecules get their energy initially from glucose molecules. So if we take a look at this view of ATP, let's just look at the one on the left over here. We'll see pretty much the same thing. We've got the adenine, the sugar, and then the three phosphate groups. But if you look a little more, more closely at the phosphates, you'll see that uh, they are charged. They actually have negative charges, and because they're negatively charged particles so close to each other, they tend to not want to be near each other. They repel because they're like charges, uh, but they don't repel enough to actually be able to break apart the molecule. So this creates sort of some instability, and it also creates um, some potential energy. So we say that the energy is locked up uh, in the bonds, but we actually um, typically represented as a high energy bond in the last in between the last two phosphates the way that ATP can deliver energy to another molecule is that that third phosphate the the bond between the second and third phosphate actually breaks and the third phosphate goes off and it joins another molecule and when it does that it delivers a punch of energy to that molecule so that it can either go through some sort of a reaction break apart or do something basically what that does is it leaves a lower energy molecule ADP behind and the ADP can be recycled back into ATP and that's why you have this two-way arrow showing that ATP can donate a phosphate to another molecule and become ADP, but that if you take ADP and you find another source of energy and free phosphate from the cell, you can actually make another molecule of ATP. And in fact, that is what happens. So ATP is, is constantly being recycled. Let's take a look at uh, an overview of cellular respiration. It all starts with glucose, and glucose goes through the process of glycolysis to form pyruvate, two molecules of pyruvate. Now the fate of pyruvate depends on what the conditions are and what sort of an organism uh, this process is taking place in. Glycolysis takes place in all organisms. It does not require oxygen. But pyruvate might require oxygen to be broken down or it might not. If oxygen is present, the end products are going to be different than if oxygen is not present. So let's take a look at the shorter pathway. If there's no oxygen present, uh, two possibilities can occur. Fermentation can occur, can occur, and if that's happening in an animal and in our muscles, you get a product of lactic acid. If it's occurring in something like a yeast uh, cell, you get ethanol or alcohol. This process, this process requires no oxygen in either one of these types of organisms uh, and it's a pretty short pathway of reactions. No additional ATP is formed. In fact, the total amount of ATP formed from glucose to either lactic acid or ethanol is only 2 ATP and that is produced in glycolysis. Uh, if oxygen is present, amazing things happen. First of all, a small series of reactions take place, takes place called, called oxidative decarboxylation. And then another series of reactions takes place, Krebs cycle. And finally, another series called the electron transport chain, or just electron transport. 
a whole lot of ATP is produced on this side. So if you combine it with the, the ATP produced in glycolysis, you have a net of 36 ATP. Not very much ATP is produced over here, zero actually. And if you combine that with what uh, was produced in glycolysis, you only get 2 ATP. So uh, we're going to take a look at uh, just the first phase, glycolysis, glucose 2-pyruvate.